Hey everyone. everyone! Guess what? It's our favorite video of book haul. <laughs> it's, the bo it's book haul time, yes. We always get very excited. Well, I always get very excited to share all the books with you guys because it's so much fun. Anyway, we're just going to kick things right off because there's a lot of books to talk about today. Right, so I just want to start real quick with something we got in the mail called The Sword and the Dagger by Robert Cochran. I think he's got to do with the actual 24 series. It's basically about a princess, a knight, and an assassin embarking on the quest of a lifetime. This sounds like your basic like RPG plot. It's like it's your starting party, right? You got a prince. I mean, I don't know if the princess has princess any magic. An assassin and the right. And so the knight walk into it's, a bar. It's basically, <laughs> walk into I'm sorry, walk into a tavern. Very interested. Uh, that's actually going on my TBR pile. Speaking of things that did get sent over that we can definitely get attached, this gorgeous box. Arusha, Arusha and, the and Song, Song of, of Death. Death. I was there when Alexa sort of unboxed it for, uh, for Instagram, Instagram uh, and I thought it was gorgeous and so we shall now unbox it for everyone to see. Like of course we have the finished copy. Which is very pretty. So this is our finished copy of uh, Ar Ar Arusha and the Song of Death. Comes There's in the a box. giant crab. There is a giant crab in here and he's not shiny. No, no sir. Can't sing uh, the song not, then. Not shiny Sorry. at all. But uh, th there is that. And since this is about the song of death, behold, uh, I want to say pens uh, in the shape really of cool uh, treble though. clefs, because why, why not? not? There's two though, so There's we two. get one. This is a guitar pick slash uh, keychain, although I feel like it's more uh, a keychain than a guitar pick, because I am telling you right now, I'm looking at this thing and give it a week of playing on guitar and that thing is just going to get worn out, <laughs> which all guitar picks will be. You got some earbuds with uh, the Rick Riordan imprint oh, kind of thing on there, which is kind of that. really, really cool. So that, that's awesome because oh, Song of Death. That's my favorite and thing. And what, what may as well be the favorite thing because we thought it was a candle at first. I thought it was a candle. But it is apparently a Bluetooth speaker. It's so cool. Right, that says Arusha in the Song of Death and right over red. there. And it's bright red, which is totally my, my, my jam. Yeah, so it's, it's great. So very, very, very fun. I am co-opting this. Yes, you may co-opt. Uh, <laughs> because I like red things. And that came in the mail. I'm gonna quickly run through some of the stuff that I did not ask for, but that showed up in the mail, just so that you guys get an idea of the things we got, just in case you are interested. So first we have from Alfred A. Knopf, we have We Are the Perfect Girl by Ariel Kaplan. Basically, I'm getting the YA contemporary vibes from this one because it's about two best friends who, one of them has the looks, the other one has the personality, and so they decide to like team up in order to, you know, orchestrate the perfect girl for this guy that they're both interested in the, to date. The caveat, the dude, like, because of a misunderstanding, thought that the one girl was yeah. the one who had the personality it, and now they're just, like, very, we'll like it through. It, it sounds like it's going to be one of those, like, complicated relationship coming-of-age stories. It sounds so. like one of those 90s movies. Yeah, basically. <laughs> then we have a paranormal romance called The Trouble with Vampires by Lindsay Sands. This is part of a series that I actually never read. I've never read this author before. Just gonna guess that it is an urban paranormal romance in the same way that the Black Dagger Brotherhood is. Next we have a contemporary romance called A Prince on Paper by Alyssa Cole. This is the fourth book I want to say in her Reluctant Royal series. I love the premises of all the books in this series. I've just never read any of them because it's always like someone in a royal family and some unassuming like normal person and they end up falling in love so I could be here for that. Last we have this book called Right After the Weather by Carol Anshaw. It's a contemporary women's fiction story with a lot of complicated relationships in it. I also got a hardcover of Tightrope by Amanda Quick. This one is from Berkeley and it is actually part of a series. I haven't read the other books, but I think they can all stand alone. An unconventional woman and a man shrouded in mystery walk a tightrope of desire as they race against the killer to find a top secret invention before it's too late. We have also from Tortine, When Summer Ends by Jessica Pennington. And this is about a boy and a girl. They meet because their summer jobs, they either are working at the same place or their summer jobs are in the same area. And they're both kind of struggling with different things. Sounds like it's going to be an interesting YA contemporary read. I also got a finished copy of The Bride Test by Helen Huang, which is from Berkeley Romance. Loved this book. I read it way early in the year. I think I read it in like the second or third day of like January. I don't even remember. This is about Kai. He is the cousin of Michael, who is a love interest in The Kiss Quotient, which is the first novel in this companion novel series. Uh, Kai is autistic and he doesn't feel like he's worthy of love. And everyone around him obviously doesn't agree with that, especially his mom. So his mom um, asks this girl named Esme from Vietnam to come to the States and like, you know, just meet Kai, maybe form a relationship with him. And so Esme like agrees. Like an elaborate blind date. Yeah. Esme agrees because she wants uh, a brighter future for her and her daughter. And then 
things unfold over the course of the summer. It's really good. I still love the Kiss Quotient just a smidge more, but this one was also very good. And then, also from Berkeley, I have two more books. We have Well Met by Jen DeLuca. I do not know the specifics of this, but it is literally a contemporary romance set at a Ren Fair, so I'm here for it. Yeah, we were talking uh, that about one Ren comes out in day. September. And this one is also out in September. It's called Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. So it is a a daring Oxford rebel takes on the powerful Duke in a love story that threatens to append the British social dis social order. <laughs> I mean, I'm not mad about it. I mean, As I a love, good love story does. I love, I'm a sucker for like British historical romance fiction just because it's just like fun. And then to have it the kind where like the girl is completely going to change the guy's worldview. Ready, here for it, here for it. Uh, those are all the things that we got for review. I know I got a couple of ebooks. and I'll just put them down in a list somewhere. Moving on to the gifts and things that we bought and such. Recently we were gifted uh, by a good friend of ours, Lily, um, uh, with Lady Midnight, the hardcover, hardcover edition. edition. Miraculously, we have all three. Kind of funny. But to round things off, uh, Alexa, was, uh, it's, yes, and so am I, uh, Alexa was able to get an illustrated history of notable shadow hunters and Denzians of Downworld by Cassandra Clare illustrated by Cassandra Jean. Literally, this book is just if you love the Shadowhunters world. Like, honestly, it has nothing, like, you don't need it. Or do you? <laughs> but here's the thing, I love, I love, I love <laughs> these characters so much. And like, for me, like, I know Maki doesn't particularly like the way Cassandra Jean illustrates. For me, like, I just, I love it. I think it looks amazing. And what this essentially is, is it's like you flip through the pages, you get a look at all of the characters, good or bad, in most of the series. You get like their birth year, you get their species, you get it's, their it's weapons. Li it's literally like a You get a like a little album, story right? here. So this is our favorite Katarina, Katarina Moore. Moss, yeah. named Blue Squirrel. They also did this thing where they integrated like flowers and the meanings of flowers into it too. They almost kind like, of look like they almost kind of look like a tarot cards even to it's some extent. So there, there, there's that hint of oh, oh, baby light would be. <laughs> and um and it's great. And yeah, and and it's I good. and and um Cassandra Jean's art style isn't necessarily my go-to, but she did to say she rendered these characters beautifully. I like think so, period. Too. It's not my it's not my cup of tea, but my goodness, these are so well done. Mm -hmm. So if you're a huge fan, I mean, they even kind of worth band. investing. It's kind of worth investing, uh, I, swear to, my love. To, I, I, I swear. So, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, look, it's Thai. It's Thai. Anyway. So, anyway. Plus pretty. And no... Bonus no... points, because it actually has characters from the Last Hour series in there. Yes. And so it's almost uh, almost a foreshadowing. No dust jacket, though, no, interestingly it, it, enough. Print, just it kind comes of like, like that. hardbound and just like silvery. Not mad about uh, it. Yeah, not mad at all. Not at all. So I actually got... A very exciting book mail from my friend Melanie from Mel to the Any. She originally I knew one of these things was coming because she said she would lend it to me, so I'm very excited to get to it. It's Patron Saints of Nothing by Randy Rebuy. It's gonna be a little hard hitting, or it sounds like it's going to be, because it's a YA contemporary that is about a Filipino American teen who goes home to the Philippines after his cousin is killed as a victim of Duterte's war, war on drugs. drugs. So that's that's what that one is. Ugh, uh, but fresh. she also snuck in this box set of Mary Poppins titles. Mary Poppins is by P.L. Travers. It is a classic I've never read, even as a child, but I do love the movies. So I just wanted to show you guys because the covers are so cute. So you have Mary Poppins, and then you have Mary Poppins Comes Back. You have Mary Poppins Opens the Door, and Mary Poppins in the Park, and the covers are just so cute. Um, and this is definitely going on our classic shelf. I think it's going to be really fun to read just because I already think the idea of Mary Poppins in general is just great. <laughs> the Mary Poppins books, uh, not, I haven't read them either, but uh, at least the very story of it and the fact that, uh, well, thanks to Saving Mr. Banks, uh, I, I now have such a huge like like affinity for it because it was always about Saving Mr. Banks. Like mm. every, And then that's why when, when Emily Blunt's version sort of came out, it uh -huh. just sort of tied everything together. And, oh, uh, so good though. Yeah, that was a morning of sobbing hysterically. And now we're gonna quickly run through my manga haul for the month of April, because why not? So, volume 17 of Yon of the Dawn. Have I caught up on Yon of the Dawn? No! Do I still keep getting the new volumes? Yes, yes. because it's Yon of the Dawn. Agreed. <laughs> oh yes, you finally got it. I want to it. eat your pancreas, which is the complete collection in one like set. The story is by Yoru Sumino and the art is by Idumi Kirihara. This literally sounds like the thing that is right up my alley and Maki's alley because it is a high school teen, I think. He finds his classmate's diary and then he finds out her biggest secret, which is that she is sick and she's dying from a pancreatic disease. Um, and he's the only one outside of her family who knows that this is the truth. And of course, the last thing he wants is like to 
befriend her knowing that that's gonna happen but of course she's so cheerful and her so demeanor it's, it's, and like now that someone knows her secret she feels like better about befriending him yeah, and yeah this <laughs> sounds literally like it will be so good but also so terrible for my feelings so oh boy and you know how we love those right mm -hmm. can't anyone say the fault in our stars and i finally caved and got full metal alchemist the full metal edition volume one because <laughs> I love the Elric brothers, but I also love a couple of other people. And I like the story. It's actually something I surprisingly think about a lot, like the way the story is constructed, because essentially it's set in a world where... You, people can... can, can uh, yeah, people uh, have the ability, ability... to control the forces of nature mm -hmm. and reality. They, they call it alchemy. And via something called basically. alchemy, right? So Yeah. And it's it's actually... It's weird that I'm into it because it's a war story at its and, heart. And, and hardcore science fiction yeah. too. Like. There's an empire that is intent on conquering all of the neighboring countries. There are people... Secretly. Yes. There are people within that empire who are also secretly fighting to stop that because they know it's wrong. And like there's just so much going on. But at the heart of it are these two brothers who are involved in this because they're very talented alchemists in their own right. But they're, what they really want is to discover the secret of the Philosopher's Stone so that they can do things that they need to do for themselves i mean it's, so it's it, what's what's so re well written about full metal alchemist is that there is a large world changing overarching uh like plot line like, that honestly, is its own freight dying. train but within that closed world of insanity where the elric brothers do to have a part to play is their own personal quest of redemption and trying to get undo the terrible you know things that they've done in their childhood um and it all gels so well together it's so, so neatly compelling. packed and it's so uh, compelling all that properly. to say you can expect to see the rest of the volumes of Full Metal coming in. This is probably one of the only other shonens that I will be interested in collecting and reading. Can't wait to finish the show. So good. Well, my uh, comics haul uh, was is thanks to, <laughs> in part, to my uh, parents in law, who were pivotal to helping me collect the entire Fables series volumes. Which is exciting for me. One to twenty-two. I've I've gotten Lexa like, marginally hooked on Fables back in the day, but it was kind of murder trying to get all of the TPBs so uh, hard to get the library. library. But since Comics in order. But right, right at the right at, during my birthday weekend, Vertigo was on sale at Comicsology, and you could pretty much get the entire Fable series like half, 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 off. half off. So I'm just like. Yes, yes, all of it. Uh, I have uh, the first six volumes uh, in uh, physical copy, uh, but, but now, we have, but now we have all 22, and I, now I can take it everywhere I go. Um, for those of you who don't know, Fables is the story of a bunch of our usual, you know, uh, with the mundane world, us, uh, know, uh, have come to know as storybook characters, Fables. Mm -hmm. So Snow White, Cinderella, the Big Bad Wolf. The uh, pigs, right? Yeah, the three little pigs. Uh, old I don't know Cole. why I remember that. They live in a place uh, in New York called Fable Town, mm -hmm. uh, glamoured to death so that none of the mundanes could of ever course. come and walk into it randomly. And they have their own sort of little system of government as they live in exile yeah. from the the the, the, oh, the fabled right. lands. Yeah, yeah. And so you know, Snow Snow White is the deputy mayor. Uh, her wolf is the, detective, the big right? bad wolf is sort the of like cop. a sheriff. Frog Prince is their janitor. <laughs> Little Boy Blue is, I think he's a male. I don't know. He's one of the younger ones. But they the, all have a role to play. Basically. But first arc is really just and really draws you in. Uh, the first episode, uh, or rather the first kind of like big arc, which is trying to get everybody's feet wet, was Rose Red Snow White's sister is found. Well, her rem well, what remains of her anyway? Yeah, uh, is, was was found splattered across uh, her live-in partner Jack. And by Jack, I mean Jack of every Jack of the Meanstock, Jack whoever, uh, Jack of Fables, so the apartment. And he's obviously prime suspect number one. And now it's up to Snow and Big B, the big bad wolf, to I solve the mystery. That. I forgot that he was and, called Big B. And so very, 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 very important piece of uh, comic book uh, history here. Um, believe the hype. And uh, now we have all of it. I'm and so it's excited. rigged. Okay, now we want to cap this off. With all the things I bought? Sure, why yeah. not? Okay, first we're going to talk about Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is the Goldsboro edition, which was an exclusive. As you can see, the cover is like a vinyl, vinyl record. You've got all of this, you know. Beautiful uh, papers. Beautiful papers, beautiful actual hardcover. This book is Taylor Jenkins Reid's latest release. It is about Daisy Jones and the band The Six and how their relationship came to be, set against the backdrop of the 70s era of rock and roll and drugs and all of that stuff. I have not yet read it, but my friends Rachel and Hannah loved it so much that they convinced me that I needed to get this particular edition of it, so I am hopeful that I will love it too. Next is a very exciting thing. Okay, so this hardcover was actually out of print for quite a couple of years. Ooh. And then this year, quite someone... <laughs> Yeah, it was quite a couple of years because it came out a couple of years ago. Yeah, and then someone on Twitter 
informed me of the fact that they were going to re-release it in a limited quantity of course and i was like okay i need it because i have the other two of this series in this edition and i just didn't have this one and i have been looking for forever for a cheap one because they were selling for so expensive because they're so course, hard to yeah, find print, yeah so it is the bear and the nightingale by Catherine arden this is the uk hardcover edition and i love it anyway this is about vasya she is a young russian noble woman and she lives with her family on the edge of a forest and their family is sort of like divided in how many of them believe in like the old gods and old traditions and how many believe in the new religious practices that they have and this comes to a head when her father remarries the stepmother comes and she's like we're gonna get rid of all the old traditions because i don't believe in any of that stuff and Vasya is adamantly of that old faith and so that kind of spirals out of control in this story and i haven't read the rest of the series but i will be rereading this one and reading the rest of this year and i cannot wait this is a book that i read last year and absolutely enjoyed and i can't wait for the sequel to come out it is called ace of shades by amanda foodie this one is basically like a very dark y fantasy because it is set in a city that sort of is like Las Vegas, but it's not Las Vegas. And it has a gang element to it. It has sort of like you stake your life on certain bets you make in it. It's a, it's a thing. Like it's hard to, for me to explain. So I'm just gonna like read you what the back says. It says, take a card and stake your soul. Survival is your only goal. Surrender to the vice within, but your life hope you win. The next book is a sequel, actually, and it's The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. This is also the UK hardcover edition. Gorgeous. This is the sequel to City of Brass, which I actually read earlier this year. It's told from two perspectives. There is a character who ends up realizing that her heritage lies in Ginny world. And so she ventures to the city of Damabad with a djinn that offers to take her there. And then there is the prince who lives in that city, who is working sort of to try to make things better for the people in the city. And so their paths eventually cross and it gets real interesting real fast. So I can't wait to see what the sequel has in store. I went to the Strand with my sister and I ended up walking out with two classics. So first is Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. Mm. Have never read a Thomas Hardy book but he is also the author of Tessa Duberville's Duberville. I don't know how to pronounce it I will not lie part of the reason that I got this was because I really want to watch the movie with Carrie Mulligan in it the second right. reason that I got this is because I just really like how it looks and I collect the Penguin Clothbound classics I have a couple on the shelf back there so wanted to add this um, and then this one I picked up because literally it was half off and I'm like you know what might as well because this is an edition I really want of this book Les Miserables, Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. I have watched the musical, I have watched the movie, so I am sort of familiar with the story and the characters. I have never read the book. And the reason why it I looks do, about just as long as the musical. It's literally like a thousand pages long. <laughs> at the end of the flight, it's another year. Anyway. Here's the thing. I really want to read this in order to be able to say I've read it, but also I'm really competitive and the fact that one of my cousins has read this multiple times genuinely loves it, by the way. That's why she's read it multiple times. It literally makes me want to be like, I need to read it. So, <laughs> so, so we will see. I have to figure out the way to read it where I can partition it off because I can't read it in huge chunks, but I also can't not be reading it like every day if I start it because if I lose momentum, I just like... Maybe if you play the soundtrack. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I really like this edition too because it's like um, got the interesting illustrations on it. It's really massive though. Like really massive. The last two things that we're going to show you in this video to are great. nobody's surprise are great because like the entire reason that i embarked on my shadow hunter's journey is so that i could read this book this month and i did it and it was great 10 out of 10 would read again um it's the red scrolls of magic which is by cassandra claire and busley chu this is the first book in the eldest curses series and that series centers around magnus and alec who are my favorite characters in the Shadowhunter world. Uh, Magnus, I think, is one of Mackie's favorite characters as well in the Shadowhunter world. Um, it's so good. It is essentially like taking readers back to the time when Magnus and Alec go on a trip to Europe right after the events of City of Glass. First three books, yeah. Yeah. And uh, all the shenanigans that ensue, especially when Magnus discovers that there may or may not be a cult that exists that he might have founded. And he can't remember if he actually founded it or, or not. how or why, but all put all all, all clues lead to Magnus Bane founded this Basically. terrible cult that's um, screwing up a lot of Europe. This right now. is the regular the regular U.S. edition, and this is the Waterstones uh, Rune edition. See, I hadn't even read this book before I pre-ordered all of this, all of this, 
And I was like, you know what? It's, it's gonna end up being a book that I want multiple copies of and I was not wrong. The way Mackie describes it, it's like the Shadow Hunter rom-com buddy cop story that we all wanted. But didn't know that we wanted exactly. until we act in it's this so, way. It's so good. It, I mean, you can actually read it without reading most of like yeah, anything and, and, after Sidiba. But here's the thing, you're gonna miss like the feelings you'll get knowing certain things. There's a lot. You're reading it. There's so many nods. There, 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 and there's enough. Uh, 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 there's enough Malik fans out there for for these books to be warranted. But they are so very, very well written uh, that they, really they will are. transcend even beyond people who are fans of Magnus and Alec because they're it's such a well written buddy cop rom com. It slides so well into the Shadowhunters canon. Like it's just like, and 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 it's it pretty it goes down pretty well on the fandom too. <laughs> It's so good. The best parts for me are not just seeing how Ma Magnus and Alec are in the early stages of their relationship, but also like seeing all these tiny little nods to things that you didn't know were nods. And so, so many Easter eggs, and I really think I that's a, lot a of great. That's a great way to to, to do tie-ins. That's a great yeah, way to co-write. Yeah, it's really great. Uh, it's 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 when you've got a, a very solid story, and then people who care about the story so much just weave so many cool things in there. So, if you see it, it's even better. If you don't see it, it's still great. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how I would put it. Anyway, it was such a great, great investment to buy these. I cannot wait to get the next ones. Anyway, those are all the books that we acquired in the month of April. To prepare you for next month, there's going to probably be two different hauls. There's going to be the May one, and then there's going to be the Book Expo one. B is coming! Okay, cool. Uh, let us know. Are you excited about anything we got? Did you also get the Red Skulls of Magic? Because, you know, inquiring minds want to know. We all are always interested to know what you guys want yeah. to hear about. And I will see you guys with another video soon. Goodbye. Bye.